and guys, so not everyone is as fortunate as me to have a really awesome folding stove like this Bushcraft Essentials Folding LF or large folding stove. And I'm not gonna lie, these can be a little bit spendy. So sometimes these are out of beginning bushcrafters or even sometimes more moderate or advanced bushcrafters price ranges. Now I definitely do recommend these little guys like this large folding stove like this guy but they like I said can sometimes be out of the price range of some people so today in this video I'm going to be teaching you guys a pretty basic skill maybe a lot of you already know how to do it maybe you don't but today we're going to be turning this into a nice little hobo stove for going out and having the same basic principles as this bushcraft essentials folding LF stove so without any further ado guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan content just like this. And now let's jump Using two things, one obviously a medium sized soup can, and then secondly, I'm actually gonna be using my Leatherman Surge for this. And I would recommend trying to use a multi-tool of sorts. The reason why I like using multi-tools for this type of project is that there's gonna be a lot of cutting, bending, folding of metal or tin, as this tin can is. So it's going to be nice to not just have the blade for starting cuts, but it's also going to be nice to have the pliers for bending out the sheet metal and such. So that is why I recommend using a pair of pliers or multi-tool that has the pliers attached to it is because <clears throat> it's nice to have multiple of the tools that this offers. So let's jump into it. So for mine, I thought it would be pretty fun to actually try something different. I have no clue if this is actually going to work out, but I also traced the design I have here. Hopefully you guys, I know it'll be out of focus a little bit, but you guys can see there that I have black Sharpie around the areas that I'm going to be doing stuff. And so I just kind of outlined a little bit of what I want to make with black Sharpie. And what I'm going to try to do is make a little stand for this so that, or make a little stand out of this area right here, this unkind of. I don't know really what this is called here, but this area that's below it, that's not like this. Uh, I'm gonna try and make a little folding stand for this so that it helps get the whole package up off the ground. And so how I'm gonna do that is I'm actually just using the little um, can cutter. And one of the easiest ways to do this is I just hook it on the bottom like this and then just press in and then that basically cuts it all. And so it's a really fast and easy way to cut just large chunks of it and then I can go back through and uh, cut the rest of it that I need to cut using the can opener and so I'm using the can opener because it's already designed to cut tin like this because it's obviously designed to cut uh, cans already so it's already going to be really good at doing that so that's what I'm going to be using for the most part here for actually cutting this so Okay, so now I'm going to use this, <laughs> but anyways, uh, so I'm basically going to just fast forward through this so I save you guys some time and then talk about it more in a little bit. So now let's fast time it. got that part done and honestly these little stands didn't work out quite as well as I thought they would or hope they would but it does still get it a little bit of a rise it's not the greatest rise in the world but it does help it stand up just a little bit more so from this point on I'm going to use the awl to punch some ash cleaning bits 
uh, in the bottom of this can or kind of ash holes for the ash to fall through as it burns because that is one issue that can arise when you do actually use these for a little bit of an extended period of time is that the ash can start to uh, clump up at the bottom of the can so to help prevent that I'm just going to use my awl on the uh, multi-tool to just kind of punch some holes or drill some holes through this tin into this so that there is some room for the ash to leave. Okay guys, so now that I got those little holes punched in the bottom of this, as you guys can see there, did take a little bit of a number out on my poor, poor little awl, but that's okay because it can be touched up. But anyways, now it's time to put the uh, front face into this for actual feeding of the fire. So now, let's do that. Okay guys, so I just whipped up a real quick bunch of little feathers here and uh, I'm going to light this off for y'all and just kind of show you guys this in action because what part of a hobo stove video wouldn't be complete if I didn't actually show the thing in action and it working. So let's do this real fast and just do a little bit of a test fire in the hobo stove before I let y'all go. So I'm going to be using the UST. Uh, what is this UST tack fire for this little demonstration? Just gonna stick this through here, start some of these curls on fire, and uh, get it rolling just so we can get a quick thing. And yes, there'll be a review coming on this little electric lighter. So, anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoy this. So, anyways, guys, I'll let you enjoy the fire here in a quick moment, but hopefully you enjoyed this build. And if you guys did, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, God bless, and I'm out.